If the function describing your distributed load is a polynomial, that's not too bad. We can deal with that. But if your distributed load is a cosine function or anything other than a polynomial, then your professor's kind of a jerk. Now, if your distributed load isn't a function at all, it's just rectangles, triangles, trapezoids, then actually that's gonna be a lot easier than this. I've already recorded a video on that before, so just click up here, go back and watch that other one, and you're all set. But the relevant parts from that video still applicable here is every time you see a distributed load, you're gonna have to convert it to an equivalent point force and find where that line of action acts, which is gonna be the centroid of your shape. The next topic you get in statics is gonna be rigid body equilibrium, which is gonna require solving for reaction forces at pins and roller joints. And you're gonna need these point forces and distances in order to calculate moments. In order to calculate the magnitude of these point forces, in order to calculate the ma <laughs> In order to calculate magnitude of these point forces, you're gonna find area under the curve. So this is gonna be integrals, right? Calculus. And that part's easy enough, whether you have a polynomial or another type of function like cosine. Where it gets more difficult is in calculating the centroid, so the line of action of this point force. And in order to calculate a centroid, you're basically calculating a moment, which is gonna be your function times a distance x. And what this is gonna to lead to is integration by parts. And that is where I draw the line. Calculating the integral of a polynomial is still using math to solve an engineering problem. But for me, and once you get to integration by parts, now you're solving a math problem that just has an engineering application. And statics is hard enough as it is to figure out the engineering part without having to get bogged down by the math. To learn distributed loads, it helps a ton to start with something you're more familiar with, and that's calculating a GPA. Finding a centroid is exactly the same process as calculating a GPA. It's a weighted average. The numerator of GPA is just the number of credits for each course times the grade you received in that course, and the denominator is just the sum of all the credits, right? This is a weighted average, that's your GPA. Now to relate that GPA to a distributed load, consider if you had a force with a function y equals x squared. And now picture that function as being broken up into Riemann sums. Think back to calculus, this is where you draw rectangles underneath your curve. Each of these rectangles represents one of the classes that you're taking. The area area of each of these rectangles, f of x times dx, represents the number of credits of this course. And then the distance x is like the grade you receive. If I were to convert this x squared distributed load into a force and location, I'd start off by doing the area under the curve to find the force, which ends up being 9. And let's throw some units on there. Newtons, why not? So in calculating the centroid, you've got your force equation in the numerator multiplied by x, which is that leverage term that generates it and turns it into a moment. We do some calculus and get a value of 2.25. Looking back at the picture, that does make sense. It should be pretty far towards the right because the right-hand side of this curve is way taller than the left-hand side. So problem one, convert this distributed load, which is defined by a polynomial function into a single point force and find its line of action measured from the pin joint, which is that triangle on the left-hand side. So starting with the magnitude of the force, which is just a simple integral of a polynomial, area under the curve, and the base is 15 feet long, so that's why my bounds are from zero to 15. Low calculus gets us to about 3,000 pounds, which is three kip, a kip being 1,000 pounds, a kilopound. To find the centroid x bar, which is the location of the force measured from the force itself, not from the pin, we'll have to come back to that later, I have my magnitude of force as the denominator, and the numerator is is x times the function force. If you want to read through this calculus, just pause the video for a second so you can look at the screen a little bit longer, but I get a value of about 9.2 feet. It's always a good idea to go back to your original drawing and make sure your answer makes sense. This distance, 9.2 feet, is over halfway, so it's closer to the right-hand side, which does make sense. It's taller on the right-hand side, so there should be more force over there, so the centroid should be on the right-hand side. I said at the beginning of the problem, I wanted to find the line of action measured from the pin joint because in the next chapter, you're gonna calculate moments about that pin joint. So I take the 9.2 plus the 12 feet on the left side of the force to the pin joint and get 21.2 feet to the pin joint. And now the cosine curve. It doesn't look much more complicated than the last problem. And in fact, doing integrals of cosine is not hard at all, but it's that extra X term that makes this an integration by parts. And it's not even that much harder. It's just a little tedious. 
Start off with the easy part. Magnitude of the force is just area under the curve integrating from zero to 20 feet because that's the length of this beam. So a little bit of calculus, I get a value 763.9 pounds. I didn't write the units on there before, but let's call it pounds. Set up my centroid equation. Again, the force I already calculated is by itself in the denominator. And my numerator is force function times X, just like in the GPA when you calculate a weighted average, number of credits, and the grade. It takes some practice in recognizing which part of your integral should be U, and which part should be dv. And the way to recognize this is when you do integration by parts, you're still gonna have to do an integral. And the integral you're gonna have to do is gonna be of du. So you wanna choose the term for u that gets easier when you take its derivative. So for this problem, that's x. When you take the derivative of x, you're just gonna get one. So basically your integral will get easier. If instead you choose the cosine as your u term, when you take its derivative, you're just gonna get a sine function and we're gonna be left with another integration by parts. All right, well, say hello to your TA, Indiana. He decided to come and help me out with integration by parts. You know I hate integration by parts. He knows I hate integration by parts, but at least he comes and helps me out with it. So I've defined X as U and everything else as DV. So the U term is just X. Now this V term is the integral of DV. So the cosine term becomes a sine term. So we got the V term again inside the integral and then DU is just one times DX since the derivative of X is one. Thank you, Indy, you were a big help. How about you look up at the camera so that the students can see you? Leave a comment down below if TA Indy is a little bit more useful than maybe some of your TAs. Now the calculus step where the sine term becomes a negative cosine, but since that second half is subtracted anyway, those two negative signs are gonna cancel out. The left-hand side of this expression, I've plugged in 20 for X. On the right side, a lot of the terms drop off because when you plug in a zero, sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one. All that work, 5552.2, and now I've lost track of what we even solved this for. All right, so looking back up on the page, this was the numerator of the centroid equation. Get an answer, 7.27 feet. Let's go back up and look at the drawing and make sure that that makes physical sense. 7.27 feet is on the left-hand side of the drawing, which is the tall side of the drawing. So that is where you would expect it. So if this shape were actually a triangle, like the straight line that I drew here, then its centroid would be one third of the distance. So one third of 20 would be 6.67 meters. And since this shape does seem to be pretty close to the shape of a triangle, it does make sense that you get a value sort of close to that. So the 7.27, seems reasonable. So now after I finish this integration by parts problem, now maybe you recognize why I don't have a super fond opinion of assigning this type of problem within a statics course. No matter how easy my TA Indy thinks these problems are, they still take more time than polynomial integrals. And that's time that can be better spent doing more engineering problems, doing more statics problems, rectangular distributed loads, triangle distributed loads, more time spent on engineering and less time on math. And so awesome segue, if you want to spend more time on engineering, the next subject in statics is going to be rigid body equilibrium. So you can click on this video right here and keep learning engineering.